Hello everyone, my name is Valerio Lagin and I work as a research assistant in Institute Pasteur. In this unit, I will give you an overview of the image forming process in microscopy. When we talk about image forming, we take in consideration physical aspect of the light, the different components of the microscope and the nature of what we are looking at. This means that image formation is a complicated process that can differ in practical aspect based on the different technology we are going to use. So, in this unit, I will give you a general understanding of the theory that will be detailed in the following units. And the easiest way to do it is starting with optical microscopy. If we summarize the bone, uh, to the bone a microscope setup, we can say that it's formed by a light source a sample and a bunch of lenses. All these components are fundamental for the image formation and even the properties of the specimen itself in the more advanced microscopy methods have to be taken in consideration. The light source can be a lamp, a diode or a laser or by, uh, be replaced by an electron beam for non-optical microscopy. The first step to form an image is to illuminate the specimen. We are going to observe a huge step in this direction was the realization of coelho illumination in 1893. Before the invention of this method of illumination, the most used method was the critical illumination, where the focus plane of the specimen and the lamp are in the same plane. The coelho illumination placed the light source uh, image and the specimen in two different focal planes, and the specimen itself is illuminated in a uniform way. In this way, the observer or the camera will never look directly at the image of the light source, having better image. The light that is a specimen can pass it directly, usually in the central area, or be diffracted by the specimen. The diffracted light, depending on the nature of the specimen and light wavelength, is different uh, and diffracted at different angles. Both these components are then used to form the final image. The diffracted light interacts with the direct light in the rear focal plane of the objective, creating constructive and destructive interference. The destructive interference generates dark areas, while the constructive in uh, interference forms light spots. Due to different diffraction properties of different wavelengths, we will always have a spot of light in different orientation or shape. In the center, we will always have a bright spot made from the undivided lights. We will have spots that have blue areas towards the central spot and red areas on the other side, with green areas in the center. The further the spot will be from the center, the dimmer they will be. It's possible to observe this pattern in a microscope using writing element in the specimen position. This happens because at the end the specimen is just a grating with a high level of complexity. This. Changing the structure and size of the grating changes the diffraction patterns. Considering what I just said about the nature of the specimen and the diffraction pattern, we can explain why apochromatic lenses with high numerical aperture can separate extremely small detail in blue light. So, from these diffraction patterns, how we form the final image? The lenses in the microscope have the important role to determine the quantity of light passing through the condenser, a special lenses, that later will be transformed in a matrix of dots. Each and every dot represents a detail of the specimen and is formed by an airy disk. The airy disk is a spike of intensity uh, with waves or rings of intensity around it. The lower the optical aperture, the bigger will be the spike. If each spike is a detail, the bigger it is, the more they will overlap, merging and destroy the difference between them. To avoid this, it's better to keep in mind that the wavelet and the high numerical aperture allow for a smaller and better defined spike, and so a better resolution. Even if this is true in theory, 
due to physical and technological constraints, it's still not possible to follow this logic all the times. An important limit to the resolution of a microscope are the aberration. There are mainly two classes of aberration, the chromatic aberration and the spherical aberration. The axial chromatic aberration is caused by the emerging of different focal planes for different wavelengths or colors. This happens because blue light is refracted to the greatest extent compared to the green and red light. The lateral chromatic aberration is caused by the same theory of axial aberration, but from rings of different colors around each detail. To compensate the chromatic aberration, we can associate to a weak diverging lens a converging lens, creating a doublet lens. The spherical aberration is caused by the difference of path taken by diffracted lights. The peripheral lights uh, and axial rays have different focal points created by the shape of the lens itself. These different focal points blur and impact negatively the contrast in the image. There are several approaches to resolve this problem, and often they are combined. Often in the objective are incorporated series of doublets and triplets to reduce to the minimum the aberration. Another simple method is to lower the aperture of the diagram cutting out the peripheral light that usually presents the highest level of aberration. But how we said before, at the end, a lower aperture decreases the resolution of the microscope. This is why in microscopy we always have to compromise considering which aspect of the specimen and acquisition take priority. With this, we conclude our first uh, introduction on image formation. In the next subunit, uh, you will have a uh, hands-on on different types of microscopy and many more, more specific information. Enjoy. <laughs>